Let us look at Ephesians, the fourth chapter, from the tenth verse. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So, God has provided all that is needful for us to grow into the fullness. My dear friends, when I stand before some of these phrases of Scripture, I do not view them as something in a futuristic manner. Sometime it might be or may not be. No. The Bible tells me that this Savior has provided for us a provision to grow into the fullness of the stature of Christ, of himself. Now, folks, if you turn to Jeremiah first chapter, you see the commission of a prophet. See, I call it the shrinking status of a Christian. I don't think we can shrink much further. No, my dear friends, you know I have shrunk in my physical height by almost one and a half inches. <laughs> it came as a surprise to me. And I don't see any good reason for that either. But when a Christian shrinks, he becomes like an Egyptian mummy. That's it. Nothing attractive about him. Very repulsive looking person. Jeremiah, the first chapter, please. See, the fifth verse says, Before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified you. And I ordained you a prophet unto the nations. Ordained you a prophet unto the nations. What was his assignments? And what were his provisions? Seventeenth verse, please. Thou therefore gird up your loins, arise, and speak unto them all that I command you. 
Be not dismayed at their faces, lest I confound you before them. Look at the way we are afraid to express that which is right. You know, somebody is saying something which is completely false. Of course, you don't like to come across like somebody who's all the time contradicting or censoring censorious persons. If you want to be censorious, you better be focused on your heart. You know, nobody likes the complainer. Somebody is all the time complaining. The hypochondriac, who is always saying, oh, I've got this ache, that pain, this thing. And somebody who always finds faults with somebody else. But let me tell you, when people meet with anybody who says, you know the trouble? It's here. It's right here. Oh, immediately they open their eyes and say, We never met a man like you. Yes, because people will only point at somebody else. Someone else is saying this and doing this and doing the wrong thing. But never do we point the finger at our own hearts. Generally, whenever things go wrong, this is how I figure it out. I say, if I had communicated enough faith to this person, if I had prayed faithfully for this person, he would never have landed in this kind of soup or in this sort of trouble. So, instead of pointing my finger at that fellow and saying, hey, you have fallen, you have fallen, huh? No, I point with the finger at myself. Deficient service, insufficient prayer and love. That's how I look at it. So, my dear friends, we see this man being, Jeremiah, being told, don't be dismayed at their faces. And God is grieved and God is displeased, lest I confound you before them. Truth has to be held forth. The banner of truth must never droop. Never droop. You know, folks, the toughest situations will yield when we lift up truth with the love of God. And the 18th verse, please. For behold, I have made you this day a defense city, an iron pillar, and brazen walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against the princes thereof, against the priests thereof, and against the people of the land. You see? The priests, the princes, the people. The kings, the princes, the priests, and the people. Now you know, folks, 
They are trying to bring in laws in Australia, England, and so on. Laws by which you must say nothing which offends the Muslim. I suppose I am. I cannot be forbidden from taking a history book, opening it, and reading it. So, the nations of the West have become so cowardly. They are being dictated to. If a man like Mr. Bush says, we want to thwart this situation, we want to outflank this kind of withdrawals and retreats, I mean retreat in a different sense, of course, drawing back, you know, nobody seems to appreciate the man and his grit. No one. There's something wrong with the American psyche today. They've gone soft in the head. That's all it is. No, I say, look here. I'm not going to cow down to all this kind of thing. History is history, truth is truth. What did you originally offer when you came out? The Quran or the sword? Those were the alternatives that you set before people, before you murdered and slew them. You offered no mercy. You offered no civilized conduct. You offered no process of law. Nothing. The Quran or the sword. And after all these centuries, you want to come back with this kind of bravado? We are not going to stand for this. We'll fight back with love. My dear friends, this is a failure in, you know, we neglected those areas. We did not send missionaries to those areas. Now, England, is in a sad plight. Marchers in the street demanding what? So the laws are to be amended by the shouts in the streets? Oh, how sad. Look at this kind of commission. You know, I have made you a brazen wall, a defense city, an iron pillar against the whole land, against the kings of Judah. See, think of Christians today. Do they ever look at passages like this and say, what, am I only to run after the greenback? Is this all my calling in life? Whereas God gave Jeremiah such an amazing commission and provision to stand by that commission. See, my dear friends, we have just shrunk. We have shrunk in our boots 
till we can shrink no further. And we are not even ashamed of it. That our ambitions for Jesus do not soar. That they do not climb any higher than self. Must Christ be a captive of my selfish desires? Is that all that redemption has given to me? Is that all a purchased possession can offer the master? You have purchased me, Lord Jesus, and here I am, all of me. I hold back nothing. Why? Why is it that we are not even in a position to say that? You see, my dear friends, no greater tragedy can befall you than an attitude of bargaining at Calvary. Calvary is the place where self is demolished. Calvary is the place where selfishness is seen in its true colors. And when you look at the Lord Jesus and his Calvary love, you have no heart to bargain there. You don't put terms before him. You give me this, you give me that, you give me the other thing, then I will follow you. No, there's no such nonsense at Calvary. It is total surrender. That is Calvary's love. That's what I owe Calvary. I owe Jesus this kind of love and renun renunciation of self. I owe him. You know, I have never bargained at Calvary. Oh, all the false structures in my life were demolished by Calvary. So, my friends, last of all, 19th verse. They shall fight against you, but they shall not prevail against you. For I am with you, said the Lord, to deliver you. The tenth verse. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out, to pull down, and to destroy, and to throw down, to build, and to plant. You know that Jeremiah was almost starving in the prison, in the dungeon, and he was sinking in the mire of the dungeon. But he carried out his commission. He carried out his commission. My dear friends, there is a price to pay for truth. There is a price to pay. My father was a much slandered man and a more Christ-like man I never knew. Though I moved with some of the great preachers in the world, He was a most landed person. And he never spoke up for himself. There's a price to pay. 
people will say this or that about you. They may even physically hurt you. But that's a small price to pay for Jesus. So, what is our commission? And how far are we carrying it out? Take this good news to every creature. That's the commission. How far are we carrying it out? How little, in fact, we are doing. So I keep continually telling myself, we are doing so little, so little. I am doing so little for my master. So little. Let us pray. Holy Father, we humble ourselves. Take away that wicked inclination to haggle at Calvary. O oh Lord, Calvary is the very last place at which any sane person can bargain or haggle. Here we are. Take us, Lord. Take us. Make me a captive, Lord. Let me not shrink in stature. We are called upon to grow into the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. We can scarcely understand what that entails. We can scarcely understand. But that is your commission. Won't you help us, precious Lord, to bring it down to brass tacks, to actual workbench, and begin to work if we must start at scratch, so be it. Please, Lord, let us be found faithful, even to the end. In Jesus' holy name, amen.